Well, we have an oil market which is really struggling to work out which, which is the, the, the biggest uh, denominator, what's having the biggest impact. Because you are right, we have seen falling oil prices now for a while, simply because the global demand uh, is not as strong as we were anticipating at the start of the year, especially in China where economic uh, weaknesses uh, has become more and more uh, something that we, we're focusing on, but also the worries about the recession in the US. That kind of was arrested recently simply because we had the first rate cut in the US that reduced the risk of a recession in the US. And then we also have a massive amount of stimulus coming into uh, the Chinese economy, also supporting prices. But just in the last uh, week or so, it's really been the geopolitical events in the Middle East with, uh, with Iran striking at Israel. Now Israel threatened to strike back. Worries are that it may have, uh, have an impact on energy supply from the Middle East. So that's why we are, we're seeing a slightly higher prices right now. But generally, we are on the soft side. We used to trade in the 80s earlier this year. Now we're trading in the 70s. And we're probably going to stick around these 70s uh, for the foreseeable future. And what about the measures China took, uh, how it will influence the demand side? Well, so far the market is calling it a mini bazooka. So not a massive uh, big bazooka. But um, what, uh, what China is suffering from uh, also right now is consumer sentiment. Sentiment in the economy is, is weak. So people are saving money instead of spending money. And obviously, they need to change that, uh, that, that outlook. And by doing these uh, me different measures in, in stimulus, which is promoting the, uh, the property sector once again, we potentially could see uh, at least some stabilization in, in China. So the, the impact so far has been quite strong. We've seen a big rally in the Chinese stock market and Hong Kong as well. And at the same time, we've seen uh, commodities really depending on demand from China rise quite strongly, especially industrial metals and something like iron ore has been rising uh, strong as well, in anticipation that this will help stabilize the economy and promote some growth and with that also demand for, for commodities. So, so far it's working. Do you think uh, in long term it will work? So far it is working, but so far it's primarily just the, the initial response. Whether it's long term it, it's going to be enough remains to be seen because China, just like many other places in the world, are struggling with demographics, an aging population, a lower, lower young population to uh, basically drive the economy. And that is a challenge that not only China is facing, but it, Japan has been facing it for years, but we're also starting to feel that in Europe now with the demographics. And we have an, uh, an oversupply of housing, which is also still uh, something that needs to be addressed. So. Whether we're out of the woods, uh, so to speak, I think it's too early to say, but as I mentioned, sentiment among consumers is important and perhaps this is enough just to incentivize or at least increase the, uh, the, the belief in, in tomorrow and the day after and that will bring back some consumption and that will help stabilize the economic uh, growth outlook. And so uh, let's look at the supply uh, side more. Uh, right now, the attack on Israel, uh, there is Saudi Arabia, also Libya uh, reopening the, the fields. Uh, what is the most important and how it will be? Well, I think from a supply perspective, you really just have to look at where is the availability of extra supply. And that's right now is in OPEC Plus, because OPEC Plus, which is obviously OPEC and other uh, major producers outside, especially Russia, they have been cutting production uh, voluntarily now for the last two years in order to stabilize and keep high prices. We're seeing now that the economic, uh, we're seeing some economic weakness starting to emerge in, in, the, in the Middle East. Uh, Saudi Arabia's uh, budget is uh, increasingly showing a big deficit because revenues are not as high as they anticipated. So the risk to supply in the short term is, is twofold. There is a risk that we could see increased production from OPEC Plus members. They have signaled they will start to do, deliver more barrels in December. At the same time, we have the risk of uh, disruptions in Iran. I think from a geopolitical perspective, I doubt that Israel will do uh, attack Iran without talking to the US first. And if Israel does anything that impacts energy prices in an upward direction just before a US election, I don't think the US will be very pleased about that. So I struggle to see that the, uh, even if Israel does attack Iran, that it will have an impact on energy supplies. So 
So I think the high prices, we're, relatively high prices we're seeing right now, where prices move up from below 70 to uh, in Brent 75, around 71 in U.S. crude, that potentially we're not, we're not going to see it much higher in the, in the short term, simply because there is supply coming from OPEC into a market where demand perhaps not is strong enough really to, uh, to receive that uh, additional uh, crude oil coming in. What impact will have the situation in the United sta uh, States on the oil market when the recession, recession is not coming, the election upcoming and production rising? Uh, so what impact? It's a very good question. And I think, first of all, we need to see who is going to be the president uh, from, uh, from November or from, first, uh, from January next year. Because we know Trump and Harris got two different agendas. Uh, Trump is uh, pro-oil. Uh, Harris probably more uh, the electrification uh, route that the uh, Biden uh, administration has been supporting. So, so depending on that, we, we, we may see some changes in the, in the U.S. Uh, oil production. But, but generally, what we have seen now for the past few years is the fact that U.S. has actually been supported by OPEC Plus because in cutting production in, uh, by OPEC Plus, prices have stayed probably higher than they should have been. That has been promoting production in the U.S. So, um, so if we see increased production from OPEC and with that lower prices, or if we, if we see it in the low 70s or perhaps even a bit lower than that, then, then, the, uh, then the ability to uh, continue to maintain production at these levels in the U.S. may start to struggle. So actually, the, the lower price, you can say, is the cure for a low price because a lower price is going to reduce production. And that potentially could be the result in the U.S. So, um, so if OPEC adds barrels into the market, U.S. energy producers may start to struggle a little bit, and that will, will hold the increase that we've seen in the past few years. Mm -hmm. So uh, where do you see the oil prices uh, by the end of the year, next year? <laughs> Well, we just published our latest quarterly outlook for, for the last quarter of this year. And, and we're basically saying that uh, we think that the, we've gone from the 80s in terms of price into the 70s. And I think we, with, with the, uh, besides the risk of an event in the Middle East, which obviously you cannot rule out, but which we believe is relatively low, then I think we, we are looking at an oil price probably in the 70s uh, for the foreseeable future. And then really depending on, on, on China next year, whether they manage to stabilize growth, and we uh, we avoid a recession in uh, in Europe. Germany is a big question right now, but uh, we avoid a recession in Europe, and the U.S. continue to lower rates, thereby stimulate uh, demand. With that in mind, I think we uh, we're probably going to look at uh, a price having gone from the 80s down to the 70s, and we're going to stay stay in these levels for uh, for the foreseeable future into next year.